Hey there, and welcome back. So today, we're going to be adding these licorice spaces, or I guess we'll just call them locks, where you can't swipe in or out of them. However, you can make matches using the pieces around them, and if you make matches using those pieces, then you can now swipe uh, in and out. So, um, thanks for joining, and let's get started. All right, so here's where we left off last time. We have our game. Uh, we newly refactored stuff, and everything that was here before is still here. Uh, we can swipe to make matches. When those matches go away, they get filled in. Uh, if we make matches underneath these ice pieces, uh, the ice pieces themselves will go away as well. And, uh, yeah, we can still move underneath the ice pieces, though, which is the main difference between these and what we're going to be adding today. So today we're going to be adding licorice pieces. In um, Candy Crush, the licorice pieces sit over the tiles. So again, just like with the ice, we're going to have to have them on an object that is further down in the um, hierarchy, or I guess in the scene tree is the correct term for it in Godot, than the grid pieces are. And uh, the difference between these is the licorice pieces block the player from moving either into or out of there. So you have to make a match with the pieces around it in order to be able to get that piece to disappear. So we're going to have to have some way of keeping track of which pieces are restricted. So uh, let's dive right in here today. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a new scene. Uh, and this scene is going to inherit some stuff. So actually, I'm not just going to make a new scene. Instead, let's make an inherited scene. And this is going to going to inherit from the ice.tscn. I'm going to rename this to licorice. And I'm going to find my licorice pieces. So as far as my aesthetic goes, I couldn't think of anything good for licorice to be aside from just licorice. So I'm going to change my texture then to be this lox tile that I have. Because I'm, because I'm inheriting the scene, I get to have all that other stuff that comes with the inherited scene. I do, however, um, actually, I think I probably want to just leave this script alone. Yeah, I'll just leave this script alone. Even though it's called ice, um, it's totally fine. It'll work just fine for what we're doing. So let's save our scene here. So save scene as licorice, and we'll save that. Cool. So back to our game window scene here. We're going to go into our grid script. And uh, let's take a look at what we did for the ice. And we're going to do something really, really similar for the licorice. Maybe we can just call these locks. We're going to do something really similar for the locks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference to that scene I just made. So export pool vector2 array. And this is going to be lock spaces. And then I'm going to make a couple more signals. One is make lock. Oh, I want to actually say it's a signal first. One is make lock, and the other is damage lock. Then I'm going to. Where did I do it in here? Oh, okay. I guess that's all I did. Um, all right. So now I have my. Uh, spawn ice method. I'm going to repeat something really similar to this. So I'm going to make function spawn locks and for i in lock spaces dot size. So over all the lock spaces, I'm going to emit a signal to make lock and I'm going to pass it a variable of where to make that lock. And that lock is going to be made at lock spaces i. All right, cool. So um, let me go out of distraction free mode here. Go to my game window. I'm going to make a new node 2D. And I'm going to put it underneath my ice holder here. And uh, for my node 2D, I'm going to rename it to lock holder. And. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to connect my signal from my grid. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's make a new script for my lock holder. So, new script. Uh, this is going to go in my scripts folder. 
Oops, too far. Oh gosh, <laughs> I went I went too far. I just need to go back and do it again. Uh, okay, there we go. Scripts, and I'm just gonna call it lock holder. Save and create. And now I can connect that signal from the grid. Uh, make lock. I'll connect that to lock holder. And I will also connect damage lock to lock holder. So my signals are all connected now. I'm going to take a whole bunch of functionality directly from my ice holder script here. So um, to the point where I'm just going to, oops, I did not mean to do that. I'm going to copy the whole thing. And I'm going to go back into my lock holder here. And I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to change where I need to. Um, yeah. Actually, no, I want to even paste over those methods. Because they're going to be the same here. On grid make ice and on grid. Except instead of make ice, it's make lock. O-O-C-K. And on grid damage lock. Okay. So, um, my scene is the, I call it licorice, I did. So I have my pieces here, which are going to be lock pieces. Um, I'm still going to make my 2D array if I need to the same way. Don't need to change anything in that method. Um, I'm going to be checking lock pieces. Actually, let me just do something real fast here. Let's find every instance of ice pieces and let's replace with uh, lock pieces. So, paste, paste, paste. This is going to be a lot faster than just retyping lock over ice every time. And honestly, way more accurate than just me looking for where it says lock. So let me just go through here. So we've got on grid make lock, passes in a board position. If lock pieces is currently uninitialized, we're going to initialize it. Then our current is going to be equal to uh, licorice.instance. We're going to add that as a child. We're going to set its position. And then we're also going to set it into the board pieces or not board pieces, into lock pieces. When we damage a piece, we're going to send in the board position, lock pieces, take damage. OK, cool, all that good stuff. Now I'm going to save all my scenes here and go out of distraction free mode. And let's take a look at my grid. And let's look at my lock spaces. So these are going to be, I'm going to make four of them. And my indices are going to be uh, 3, 2, oops, I didn't hit enter, 3, 2, and then 4, 2, and then I'm going to do 3, 7, and 4, 7. All right, cool. Now, um, if I'm right, I should be able to hit play and have everything work. Okay, cool. Oh, I never never told it what the licorice was. So, um, oh, no, it was just not able to find it. Oh, because I called it ice. So, licorice. I changed the name of the scene, but I didn't actually change the name of the variable. Let's try that again. Uh, okay, cool. So... We didn't make our ice because I didn't call spawn locks. So I'm going to go back to my grid script here really fast. And in my ready method, I'm going to call spawn locks. And let's try that again. OK. So the way it is right now, um, these act exactly like regular pieces, or like it would for the ice pieces right now, because that's all the code I copied. I can swipe in and out. It's not doing anything special. And if I make a match underneath them, I'm not sending out that signal so they're not being destroyed, but I can send out that signal really fast just by adding it to my, in fact, let's do that right now. Let's go to, 
destroy matches, is that what I called it? Touch different find matches, use piece, destroy matched. So after we emit the signal, we're going to emit another signal and we'll call this damage lock and we'll send in a vector to ij. And actually, since we've been talking about refactoring, why don't we refactor this so that we're not emitting that signal again and again and again. Let's instead just make a new function. So function, we'll call this damage special and we'll pass in a column and a row. And then I'm just gonna grab these two lines right here and pass those in and then of course, unindent them a bunch. There we go. So, and instead of being ij, it's gonna be column row. This will make it more readable and it keeps our destroy matched from getting too cluttered. Uh, and then I'll just in here, damage special ij. All right, cool. That's easier. Now let's try that out. Let's see if I broke anything, which I very possibly did. Okay, cool. So they're damaged just fine. The problem though is these aren't adding that extra functionality that the licorice pieces do where I can't swap in and out. Uh, essentially, functionally, these are the same as the ice pieces. What I want to do is I want to, before I swap any two pieces, I want to make sure that both those pieces are part of um, everything but the licorice pieces, and then I'll allow them to be swapped. And then um, once I damage a piece, I will send a message back to the uh, grid script to tell it to remove that special spot from its list of special spots. So um, the first of those, I have my restricted fill. Um, I'm going to have a few different pieces that are going to be restricted movement. So I'm going to say... Uh, function restricted move and I'll call this place and this is going to be first we're going to check the licorice pieces or the lock pieces whatever I call them so if is in array and the one I want to check is lock spaces and I want to check it for place so here we're using our nice refactoring again I'll return true Otherwise, I'll return false. So there we go. I've got my restricted movement here. Now I'm just going to check to see if it's one of the restricted movement places. So when I'm swapping my pieces, which is here, yeah, swap pieces. So first I check, or first I assign what the first piece and the other piece is. Then I check to make sure that they're both not null. I also want to check to make sure that neither one of them is inside the um, the lock pieces. So if first piece, uh, actually, I want to do the column and the direction. So I want to say if vector two. Actually, I need to give it the actual argument. If not restricted move vector to column row and not restricted move uh, vector to column row plus direction uh, then I will do all of this stuff in here so let me grab all of this and indent it and that should be fine to restrict the movement. Uh, if I hit play, let's test this out. So I can't move in or out of those now. Um, I can still make a match and it might take me a second to do that. The piece goes away. But once the piece goes away, I didn't reset it as not being a restricted movement space anymore. So like I can move other spaces just fine, but I can't move in and out of that space because it's still part of my array. So I want to send a signal from my lock holder back to my grid to tell it to remove something from its array. So in my lock holder script here, 
I'm going to make a quick little signal. I'm going to say uh, signal remove lock. And then down at the bottom, when I'm making it null, I'm going to emit signal remove lock, and I'm going to give it a board position for which one to remove. Now, uh, in the actually before we do this, let's hook up that signal. So lock holder, remove lock, we're going to connect that to our grid script, and let's just connect that. And then here, what I want to do is remove it from the grid pieces. And in order to do that, I'm going to do something that's a little different than maybe what some of you have seen before, especially with a for loop. So I'm going to iterate through everything that's in the lock pieces, but I'm going to iterate through it backwards so that I don't have a uh, null exception error or an out of range exception error. So here's what I'm going to do. This is going to need to have, I'll call it a place, which is the vector that we're passing in the board position. So I'm going to say for i in lock spaces dot size. Actually, because I want to do this backwards, I'm going to do for i in range um, lock spaces dot size negative one negative one. I'm way better at doing for loops with uh, one of the C languages than I am with Python. Um, so what this is, is my range, instead of just going from zero to however many pieces are in there and have it exclude the last value, I'm gonna start with the size, and that should be size minus one, because if it has a size of five, the first index is four. If it has a size of four, the first index is three. So I wanna start with size minus one and then go down to negative one, but not including negative one, at an interval of negative one each. Um, I wanna say if lock spaces i is equal to place, then I'm going to remove it. So I'll do lock spaces dot remove i. Um, okay, cool. And then this way we don't have to break out of the loop um, because we're cleaning up after ourselves as we go. So you're not going to have a, an out of range exception error. So let's try this just to make sure I'm right. Um, I'm often not right, just so you guys know. You shouldn't 100% trust me. I'm, I'm an idiot who's just doing stuff here. Um, okay, so let's, uh, I might need to play a little bit here to uh, get a match that I like. So uh, bear with me for just a, a hot second. Okay, so let's make sure that we don't get an error when I do this. Okay, that's promising. And there we go. We can swipe in and out again. Sweet! So, uh, there we go. Uh, that's licorice pieces. So next up is concrete pieces, which are going to act similar to the icing pieces. Uh, after that, we'll do chocolate, which has the extra twist of um, multiplying if you don't do anything to take them off the board. And then after we're done with all these special pieces, we'll start looking at creating bombs, the column bombs, row bombs, etc. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments down below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. Um, if you disagree with my methods or anything I did, feel free to leave a comment. If you learned anything, feel free to leave a like. Uh, if you didn't learn anything, you can still leave a like. They don't actually check that. And yeah, I um, hope everybody out there is having themselves a wonderful day.